Well, hello everyone, I'm Yanni from vu for You Gaming and today we are back in Atom RPG. So, um, we still have our quest to find General Morozov um, and then we need to try and help Trader Yashin, but uh, yeah, I think we have to go to the big city for that. So I'm thinking, well, I've got to check out the other buildings, but we also really want to uh, try and get some uh, uh, money somehow so we can get some gear. That would be a, a good idea, I think. So maybe we should try and check out uh, the town and see if there's someone in here that we can uh, help out with something and make some money. Okay, there's some. Okay. And it looks like there's a lot we can interact with in here. Okay, well, let's check to her. Before you stands a young woman. She is concentrating on writing something down in a yellow notebook, which has the word accounting on the cover. She is completely immersed in this activity and does not notice you. Hello, can I ask you some questions? The girl tears her eyes from her book f or from her work for a moment and stares blankly at you. Her thoughts must still be there in the world of calculations and formulas. Ah, huh. what? Right. Uh, I'm sorry. Didn't notice you there. You want something? You better talk with my brother behind the bar over there. I'm too busy to talk now. She finishes her words without looking at you. She waves you in the direction opposite of the bar and again becomes one with her notebook. Okay, well, let's go and talk to her brother then. Before you stands a plump, red-faced man aged around 25. Ooh, he does look a little older than 25 in this picture though. He is wearing a white shirt and some rather short shorts. He has a well-kept beard. In his hands there's a clean towel he uses to swat annoying flies. Upon seeing you, the man gives you a wide smile. Oh, a visitor. Welcome to the tavern. A lot of travelers here these days. What do you mean? Well, you're, you're here right now, and not long ago a band of armed people came through the village. People with guns usually mean trouble around these parts, but they were pretty civil. Just like real army men. Hmm, can you tell me more? Not much more to tell. They weren't chatty. Our village head wanted to speak to them about some issue, but they just left. So I don't think he struck any deal with them. They talk to our gate guard more than to anyone else. His name is Jan. If you're interested in knowing about those guys, I suggest you speak to him. Yeah, anyway, maybe you need a drink or some food. Uh, are there any jobs you might need me for? You know, that's not my thing. You'd better talk to my sister. I'm just an ordinary guy. All I want is to sell some self-made beer and or moonshine to a traveler. That I'd do gladly. Need something done around the house? A light bulb screwed or a chair fixed, for example? Just give me a call. But more serious stuff is for Katya's ears. She's the proactive one. <laughs> okay. He looks at a, lo at a young lady who seems to be lost in some calculations. It's just that she's pretty busy right now. Tallying the expenses, planning the budget, you know. And when Katya is busy, it's honestly pretty hard to get her attention. Oh, but I just thought of something. You know what she loves? Making all sorts of potions, tinctures, and spirits. That's what. I can't really understand why, but she's quite into all that chemistry stuff. Not that it matters. Look, I think what you should do is go to her and tell her that I sent you to taste the last liquor that she made. You'll have a drink and talk business while you're at it. Smart, huh? I think it is. Uh, thanks for the advice. Now let me take a look at the menu. Thanks. Uh, let's ask some questions. How do you like working around here? Not too bad. Great even. Yes, it's pretty great. A simple job, but well respected by the people. For obvious reasons. <laughs> if there's a party of some sort, if there's a celebration due, or maybe even a burial, or simply a day off your job, who's there to pour you a fine glass of your favorite poison? That's me. And that's why I'm liked by the people. The barkeep smiles warmly and pats himself on the belly. It also helps with getting the money, of course. My sister and I, we are... What do they call it in the western world? Oh, small business owners. Well, she more than I. She does all the math. 
Uh, I'm happy that you found your passion. May I ask something else? I like this guy. <laughs> He's very down to earth. That's a, a nice um, breed of people. Tell me about yourself. What's there to tell? Me and Katya, we are local and we don't go out too much, but I don't have anything against that. I like it here, working as a bartender. That's my job and Katya's job is keeping the establishment from falling apart with her accounting skills. See, even now she's, she's sitting over there with some documents, totally ignoring the world around her. That's okay. What, we do with, what would we do without her accounting? I don't even want to think about the job I'd had then. I think you'd cope. Care to answer more questions? How's life out here? How's life, huh? The people here are more or less civil. And the living itself? Well, we don't suffer from hunger or sudden changes. To some it sounds boring, but I really like it. I actually only ever changed one thing about this place. When we inherited this dining hall, I started calling it a tavern instead. It's a great word, tavern. Kind of cozy, right? The old name was Laborer Dining Hall Food for Workers. Those are the words of the old world, and me and Katja, we didn't see much of it. Quite the innovator you are. Can I ask something else? Uh, heard any good gossip? I heard that in a small town far away from here lived a militiaman called Maxim Maximovich Rukichansky. <laughs> he had a family, a son and a wife, normal life, and that town was quite well preserved. But this biker gang had ch have chosen it to chosen it to be their target. They even killed Maxim's family. Well, in his fury. He took the best Volga from the police station and killed every single biker in the gang. Now Maxim, the warrior, wanders the country roads all alone with no meaning in his life. A sad story. That's pretty interesting. Gossip. I heard that in a small town far away from here lived a militiaman called... Now uh, that's just the same gossip. So oh, it's a sad story. That is definitely true. Um. Okay, maybe another question. No more questions. And let's just check out the menu. Um, for now I'm gonna keep this. And uh, It's a luxury item though, so I'm thinking it might be worth it to sell it. Uh, what if I put it in here? Okay, six rubles. Oh, it actually says that I didn't even notice. Okay. Wasteland dweller. dwellers still use the pre-war rubles. Uh, Ah, okay. There was a dispute about using soda caps for currency, but this idea kind of died. Ah, okay, so it's kind of like if I want rubles for it, then I can put them in directly, so this is the currency. Um, okay, and then we can get what can the effect 30 minutes minus 1 at 10, dexterity, and plus 1 luck, plus 1 strength. Flying minus 150 radiation. 30% effect. Wow, there's a lot to, to figure out here with all this stuff. Um, oh, right. Hunger. Hmm. Well, I don't really know if... Well, it's a luxury item, so I guess it's just something you would sell, isn't it? But we don't have enough anyway, so for now I'm gonna keep it. Knife, a regular knife. Useful in all sorts of situations. You need to have one in order to collect loot from animals. Oh, then we would like, maybe even from the insects, I don't know. Oh, a simple aluminium fork, who now considered a luxury item. Uh, a regular cap. Oh. First tree speechcraft. A compact cassette. The production of compact cassettes in USSR was started in 1960 to 1970 in 10. I'm just wondering if this is something that we can use for something, like if it would give you a quest or something, that would be interesting. Um, because otherwise, why? Or maybe they just added it for it to be kind of an interesting menu. Oh, a condom. It's a valuable thing to have if you want to be a wasteland bachelor, but don't fancy any STDs. That is true. Very true indeed. A uh, TT pistol. And yeah, okay. Glass. Consider a rarity among the wasteland dweller. Meat. Piece of raw meat. 
If you're hungry, you can consume it as it is, but we ran raw meat, it's not the best diet for you. <clears throat> so can we cook things too? I have no idea. Okay, let's see. Huh. Okay. Well, we can't really afford any of this anyway, and I don't want to sell this. I just want to figure out how to get water into it, actually. Uh, so this is once you have figured out what you want, you can trade right there. Okay, well, let's just uh, wait a second. Would you like to hear an unusual business proposal? Well, let's see it. The matter is pretty simple. Small job, really. What I need is for you to bring me this book I ordered. It's all the way in Krasno. Abraham, the local bookseller, has it at his store. I can't go get it myself because of all the work around the bar. Yeah, it does look quite busy. <laughs> I can tell that you're quite a traveler. Maybe you could bring it for me from the city. It's already pay been paid for and I will pay you for your troubles. What do you say? It's a deal. If I ever get to Krasno, I'll visit this Abraham character. Now, what's this book about? Well, see, there was this writer named Tolkien. Ooh, I heard that name too. Who lived in England, which was a country way back before the war and he well, he kind of wrote fairy tales for adults, you know. Uh, you know, I should probably call it science fiction or not. I'm not too good with genres. Doesn't matter, the book is about another world. Yes, and I'm not good with genres either, but I do know what he's talking about, and I'm sure a lot of, a lot of you guys do too. Anywho, I always loved reading books, especially if they're about something extraordinary, something fantastic where there's robots and rings of Saturn and ancient Greek myths and all that kind of stuff. And then I was told that uh, this Abraham in Krasno can get me this Tolkien's book. And with a special translation too. Anyway, I drove to the city and ordered it, but now that it's there, I can't find the time to go back and pick it up. Okay, well, but, uh, sure. It's an amazing book. So, well, I haven't actually read the books, but the movies are great. <laughs> so uh, I would definitely do this for him. Wow, thank you so much. Here it's the recept receipt for the book. Just show it the receipt for the book. Just show it to Abraham and he will give it to you. The bartender hands you a small square of thick paper. On it, written in a formidable cursive, are the words, the owner of this document, Rachenko VA, or his legal proxy, may obtain a copy of the Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien, translated to Russian by Bobur C.A. after handing over this receipt, signed by Merkin A.D. or Merkin. Um, okay, bye. Cool. Well, now we have like two, um, again, a book receipt and our customer. Now we have two quests in Krasno. Uh, to help the trader Yashin and to bring that book back. Yes. Okay, well, let's see. Yep. Talk to Katya again. Um, before you stands a young woman, she is concentrating on writing something down in a yellow notebook which has the word account on the cover. Uh, was that the same? It sounds like it sounds different than the first time we talked to her, even though it's the content is the same or. But, okay, hello, your brother sent me to you. He said that you have a new liquor to taste. The girl stops her calculations and stares at you blankly. After a moment, she blinks, then she smiles and tucks the tiny pencil stop behind her right ear. I see. Well, that's great. I doubt you've ever drunk anything quite like it. It's a new recipe, you see. Well, not really new, more like forgotten by everyone. Oh, I'm really inclined to try it out. The girl nods and gestures you to wait. She leaves and heads to the dark corner of the cat's heaven. She comes back holding a bottle made of reddish clay. The bottle has markings except three letters uh, XXX scribbled on it. Yes, drink up. Okay, boldly drinking it. You carefully take a tiny ship, sip. The drink has a strange sour taste. You shrug and hand the bottle back to the girl. You do not feel intoxicated, not even nauseous. You feel that you can take another sip. You take the bottle and have another. What harm, harm can a few more sips do? <laughs> you 
You're starting to feel a little dizzy. It's nothing serious. At least you can still feel all of your extremities. You feel as if they're floating in the air, as if the air was thick, like water. Your mouth is starting to feel dry and you decide to take another drink of the liquor in order to not dry out completely. You hear the girl's voice coming from afar. Oh, it's the best. It's best you don't. Too late. You already swallowed your drink. The world around you has stopped. You also have stopped. But you feel your thoughts are very clear and moving fast in your head. What am I doing here? And why? Why am I here? Why did I drink this point? What for? The sound of your own thoughts resembles a thunderstorm that's growling far away, but it is getting closer with every second, and you realize that the sounds you mistook for the sound of thunder are in fact steps. From out of a misty void, Jian Morosov appears before you. You're looking for me, he asks, and his voice is like a hundred voices in one. You cannot reply, you're frozen. Looking for me, yeah, you're looking for me, says Morosov, and takes your hand. Let's go. You're wandering through the thick grey fog. Morozov is walking in front of you. You are following him. The general confidently paves the way and the only thing left for you to do is follow him. Finally the fog is clearing and you see a marvelous view in front of you. Mushrooms. <laughs> a, gi a gigantic, unreal, primordial mushroom forest. Their huge trunks are thicker than the biggest oaks you've ever seen. Their tops obscure, um, obscure the sky like giant umbrellas. The general continues to lead you onward, weaving around the massive mushroom. Your tour through the fantastic forest stops suddenly at a truly colossal mushroom bigger than all else. This is God, says Morosov, but you can't see him anymore because he speaks from inside you. He speaks from your head, using your mouth. You are General Morozov. Suddenly the earth starts to shake and you struggle to keep your balance. It feels like an earthquake. When it's over you look up on the mushroom giant and... The scream is heard for miles and miles around. The mushroom has a giant human face. Bow down, says the mushroom, and you faint. You fainted and fell asleep for some hours. After waking up, you feel no headache or any other signs of hangover. Uh, what the? Oh sh! <laughs> okay, what the? Alive, Vasya. She's alive. Oh, my man, pass me some vodka. Now there's new people in here. Okay, uh, continue. You see the girl holding you up so you don't fall on the floor. Your stability returns as the strange sensations of the tincture leave you completely. The bartender, swearing quietly, wipes the sweat from his brow. How are you feeling? Uh, surprisingly well, actually. Stay silent. That was terrible. What sort of moonshine is that? Sorry, sorry. It's my last potion, but damn it. What an idiot I am. Overdone it with the potion. Sorry. What a damn shame. I almost killed the girl. It's okay. <laughs> the girl lets out an exhale and gives you a smile. We've watched over your things while you are out. Feel free to check. You check your belongings to discover that you have not been robbed. Miracles really do happen in life. I still don't understand why it turned out so strong. I used my grandfather's recipe that my grandma recorded. She says, speaking mostly to herself. Okay, anyway, we need to have a talk. Gotta be sure your brain completely recovered. <laughs> That's a good idea. Can I ask you some questions? Or, oh, I'd rather go outside, take a breather. Well, let's ask some questions. I'm listening. What are you doing? The girl gives her notebook a tired look. It's an old notebook, stained by grease, torn at the sides, covered with dirty fingerprints. Like most things after the war, it's been through a lot. Uh, seven seals. Okay. <laughs> Just got. Oh, hi, Vasya. No letters this time, I'm afraid. So that's the male people? Oh, these guys. No. Uh, well, trying to make the ends meet the means, you know. My brother Vasya and I, we own this tavern. He tends the bar, I do all the math, and pay the taxes to the village head. Business is not great, though. Also, sometimes I develop new types of beverages for our customers. 
Some I make using old recipes, some I create myself. We distill it and sell it right here. I love that particular job, but I can't be a brewer without doing the accounting and, tax and the taxes. So here I am. Uh, yeah, no getting around that stuff. Uh, well, I actually want to check out these guys, so let's just... Um, because I don't know if they're new guys or... Like, where did the other guy go? Did he, like, leave? Shit. Okay. So maybe they're just passing through. I don't know if they actually kind of come from this town. Let's just talk to them. Okay, you see a muscular man near the bar. He eats minced meat out of a can and washes it down with vodka. His face looks familiar to you. Yes, of course. It's another atom cadet you knew before being sent on a rescue mission after the lost expedition. You never were friends, but you still recognize him. His name is Alexander. Oh, hey, pretend you didn't... Uh, well, let's say hi. The big guy turns to you, squinting a little. Finally, he waves at you. Hey there, Yanni. Didn't recognize you. The superstitious believe that it means you'll get rich. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, what are you doing here anyway? Shrug. Speak quietly. No one needs to hear us. Uh, uh, yeah, speak quietly. Let's do that. You throw a quick glance at the sleepy barkeep and the girl at one of the tables. Both either pretend to not give a damn about your conversation with Alec Alexander, or really don't care about it. Despite that, Alexander quickly nods to you and starts speaking quietly. Well, it's, I'm pretty sure that the bartender is like the best place for gossip in this town, so it might be a good idea to not be speaking too loudly. It's good that you keep to yourself. People around here are savage. Better not let them know who we are. Low lives like these will cut you up in a blink of an eye. You're also looking for more stuff than the others? I'm doing the same thing. You were sent before me though. I just stumbled upon this village not long ago. So is the life in the waste treating you okay? What are you? My mother. Don't answer. I can see you're not her. Life is okay. Well, it's not like they say in my native Georgia. Um, a sweet peach, but it's still okay. You suddenly remember that neither Alexander nor his family are from Georgia, but you politely decide to keep your mouth shut about it. Hmm. I'm more worried about finding new clues to look for the missing expedition. It's even more important for the heart and for the soul. Yes, God forbid we don't find those poor suckers on time. I'm analyzing all the clues very thoroughly. My brain's working better than your computer's. I'd share some clues with you, but what's the point? Better look for your own clues. We might find them faster that way. Um, hmm. Uh, fine, fine, let me ask something else. Yeah, I didn't really see the logic in that. There's something s sneaky about this guy. Ah, you're always welcome, woman. Okay. What do you think about this place? It's a good place. A lot of holes in the walls and the roof, but that's not important. You know me, woman. I'm a forest guy. I'm at one with the nature. I don't need much. Just some food and shelter from the winds. But that lady? Alexander nods in the direction of the girl who writes something down in a notebook, which has the word accounting on the cover. Yep, Katya. Uh, Katerina Bat Batkovna. She could have been more cooperative. It's not like some local mutant is hitting on her. I was on the force, but she ain't having it. She doesn't even look at my direction. These are the people we've spilled blood for in Afghanistan. Well, not our blood, of course. Mujahideen's blood. Mujahideen's. Mujahideen's. Mujahideen's blood. I can't remember how to say that. You certainly remember that Alexander never served in the Marine Corps. Oops. Never thought, fought in Afghanistan and actually got his blue beret from a passing trader a few years ago. But you politely decide to keep your mouth shut about it. Hmm. Well, let's just keep asking him, even though there's something strange going on here. So, I'm making calculations. I'm analyzing data. Just a little bit left. I'll find these guys in no time. Then it's time to go home. Oh, and keep on drinking. For the glory of our secret organization. Would you just look at that guy? Alexander cautiously eyes the barkeep and lowers his voice. 
Look at the eyebrows on him. Real mutant. Most of them here are like this. It's good that you and I, my friend, know how to keep a secret shut in our mouth. Because hell knows who might be listening. The pentagrons of our times. They would take over Atom in no time. Bye bye, people. Alexander waits until the barkeep turns his back and then shakes his fist at him while making an angry face. You be careful out there, <laughs> F-boy. Uh, well, we kind of want infor information, but I really don't like this guy. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay, so he'll still talk to me after saying that? Uh, let's just see. I started tending to my muscles as of late, doing some bodybuilding, you know. I doubt a shrimp like, like you would find that interesting, though. Yes, why do you need this? You, my friend, only think of the material aspect of life. You and I don't know each other well, but I'm almost sure that for you, this is just another means to an end. Knocking out doors, scaring people, lifting heavy things that are required for your mission. But me? To me, you know, me, strength is beauty, the hidden beauty that makes girls around you blush, blush and drop their pants down. Yeah, boy, yeah, boy. Uh, yeah. Um, no, thank you. <laughs> He's such an idi idiot. Seriously. <laughs> Sorry, guys, but... Oh. <laughs> Alexander shows off his mu muscles to you. They're quite large. His hands look more like chimneys. And so far, he hasn't told me anything at all, which I'm about to tell him. So he didn't learn anything of importance. How should I put it? Not long ago, I was walking through a forest. I might have had something to drink. Just a little. What are you? A cup? Were you a cup before the war? Are you gonna send me to the clinic? No? Well, then listen carefully. So suddenly I hear, holy crap on a cracker. A child is crying in the woods. Wah! Wah! It sounded so real, I swear to God. I kept on walking, of course. Obviously, it's some kind of new mutant that learned how to even... Im Im imitate a child's cry to uh, lure people into a trap, sure. But even if it wasn't, I don't feel like dealing with babies. I'm not that guy. Maybe in another life, but not right now. And I advise you to do the same when you hear something like this, especially in an unpopulated area. Okay. Well, I think we have heard everything, right? We have more than one option here. Huh. No. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's like, he's just gonna be tagging along or following us and then kind of, you know, he will be the one stealing the glory uh, without doing a thing. Okay, well, uh, maybe we should keep talking to her. It looks like this guy might stick around. Oh, and look at all these people that are here so suddenly. Oh, works and works and... Oh. Okay, well, I think we're gonna see if we can get some more out of um, Katya. And I'm looking for your heavy. Oh, what are you? Mm -hmm. Okay, everyone's looking for work around here, but I'm afraid I can't help you personally. What I can do is recommend you to Comrade Kovalev, our a uh, village head. He always has some work to be done, but he is a respected man around here. His tasks re require responsibility. It's unprofessional to just send the first girl who comes along to him. I don't know. Maybe you can help me with some little tasks. I'll know that. Um, so I'll know that you can be trusted. What do you need help with? Oh well, it's awkward. Well, there are some fly agaric I need picked, but I can't find the time, and foraging is not really my thing. It's all dirty there, and you stumble upon the beasts that bite from time to time. Could you help me out? Pick some fly agaric. I can tell you that you're a strong girl, not at all like me. Five mushrooms will be enough. It's not far from here, just over the fence. Can you do it? Uh, listen, maybe let's skip all mushroom pad and get straight to the point because you see I'm a serious woman I'm very busy well I kind of want to head out and do this just for the fun of it so let's uh, see if we'll get the mu mushrooms fine I'll get to mushroom picking but um, uh, I'm not here about that uh, tell me about yourself 
I don't even know what to tell. All my life was spent here in Ostratnoi. Never really seen the outside world. Well, unless we count short trips to the Krasni. A uh, Krasno. <laughs> the girl sighs and shakes her shoulders with a sad look. Don't th think that I'm whining or something. Life is pretty good. As for the world? Well, maybe I still have some time to see it. Plenty of life left to li live and all that. She stops talking all of a sudden and lowers her gaze. Seems like the story is over. Uh, don't be sorry. Uh, don't be sad. Let me ask a new question. Nothing there to look at. Trust me. Well, gotta go. No. Don't be sad. Let me ask a new question. Yep. Uh, tell me about your village. It's a nice village. People are civil. Everyone works hard to keep things running. Yes, it's a good village. Too bad it's perishing. Criminals are keeping us down. We had two draughts in a row and most of the young people moved away long ago. Only my brother and I stayed. You know, when we were kids, this was a thriving community filled with people. It's not like that nowadays, because long ago, people had a real purpose in life. Now they don't. The girl sighs and looks out the window at the nearly empty main street. One thing makes me happy. That merchant that came to our village, his last name is Yashin. He's very proactive. Built himself a little shop. And have you seen it? It's so funny to look at. He probably got the idea from some western movie, but I think eventually this village will break him too. Probably turn him into an alcoholic or something. Uh, have you ever thought of leaving? Where would I go? To Krasna? I don't know anyone there. No friends, no family. What would I become? A prostitute? No thanks. Better to stay here, running my own business. Although the big city would be fun to visit someday. Okay, have you heard any good rumors? I heard that this band, Atomic Love Gurus, went on a tour around the wastes. A traveling salesman showed me their bootleg album once. It was great. They sounded like the Beatles joined Boney M. Uh, sad that I'll never hear them live. Maybe you will. Um, oh, 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 well, we have kind of everything, haven't we? Nevada? I don't need to battle with... Oh, she also has some stuff. What is this? Cucumber brine, or wrestle, is a favorite traditional remedy against hangover. Oh. Okay, well, that could be handy at some point, probably. Okay, let's see. Book receipt. Mm -hmm. And then we have this. Okay, well. Uh, 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 no exit from here. Uh, what if I just... No. Um, there we go. Now we are out. Okay, so, uh, well, I did see um, there's a lot of stuff here. I, I, all these people I wanted to talk to. Look at that guy. I still need to. Oh, we talked to him. I haven't talked to this guy yet. And, uh, and well, the, the. Oh, look at the people. Ah. Okay, can I see the time? That's the time so but I don't really know if you can, where can you see, like, it says hunger here, but is it actually going down or anything? It seem to show anything, it just says hunger. So, um, and there's nothing here, because I have no idea if I'm, like, am I about just completely, um, like, five toads do it. Yep. Just completely blind. Like, no hunger thing. Well, we still have some skill points. Um, anything that I'm thinking yet? Oh, let's just do that. So let's see. Aha! Uh -huh, so that's what she was talking about. I wonder if she's crushing on him. No. Um, mushrooms, mushrooms, mushrooms. See some out here, but um, there's also a spider out here. And we don't have a knife or anything. One right there. So I'm not too comfortable with going there, I don't think. Is there anything here? Nope. And there's these ones. Nope. Not ones we up. There's one there. But then there's like... Riddles. Hmm. 
are we supposed to get money if everything that takes money takes it out there? Oh. Well. Try this. What happens? Could technically punch the insects or the, the, the rat. Coming? My oh, I'm right there. I was I don't I don't know. I overlooked myself. Okay, Let's see, missed myself. Not over Danish <laughs> way of seeing it. Saying it, I guess. Uh, okay, well, let's go over here. See if we can steal this. See. Ooh. Yep. Run, 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 run. Let's just. Move away a little bit. Oh, 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 okay, okay no. Oh, that's not a nice. Oh, what's that? It felt like there was something moved over. It just seemed like there was something that got highlighted right there, but not. Oh, but there's a there, but I don't think I want to go into that area just yet. Hmm. Oh, we could go over the spider in. That's nice. Okay. Oh, look. Okay. Well, if I want to test this out, see if we can actually deal with these um, like this. I guess over here. There we go. So punch. Yeah. Uh, how do you punch? Uh, if I left click. Okay. You don't have enough action points. Okay, I missed. I missed. I mean, I don't have. Okay. I don't have enough. Okay. Aimed. Really know how this works. Ah. Um. Okay, so what gives me more attack points? Hmm. Maximum KOA, million um, damage. This TOT. Ability to dodge blows, that would be nice. So I'm kind of thinking. Tension governs accurate. Ah, action. Well, that's action. Points. Okay, so I have seven. Uh huh. So, let's see. Governs your ability to use kicks and punch. That. Mm hmm. Um. Let's just get an extra point. Okay, so I can do this while in combat. That's interesting. Uh, it's going speech. No. Uh. So, but if I want to change these, it might kind of be this up here, right? So, governs so accuracy. That's range compared. Personality, nope. No. Dexterity. Accuracy. Hmm, yeah, but that would probably be done. Oh. Ah, I don't have any more points up here. Aha, uh -huh. okay, so that one should give us. Better accuracy, we just missed it. Um, but which one will give us more? Maybe this one will give us more action points. I don't know. Um, can I run away? I, at least. This is not good. What is? Okay, so seven is how far we can move. We have 34 health points. Um, but AP3 Mermic Worker Mist. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nothing in here. Action point seven. Yeah. So, but why does it say AP3 here? I'm a little confused. I am a little confused by this. Hmm. Well, 
Chance 61%. Okay, now I can hit. Okay, so, and I can hit again. And, uh -huh. Okay, so I can use all my action points in one, like, round or what? Don't have enough action. Okay, well, it's injured. What if I move over here? Oh, so I have my. Ouch. Okay, so I have. Action punch. All right. Okay. It. That costs three. So it costs. Ah, so punch costs three action points. That's what it means down here. And this is the action points I have. Oh, okay. Almost dead. Hit you again. Oh, and we missed. Okay, well, I have one action point. Let's go up here. Ouch. It doesn't do much damage to me. Okay. Missed. Okay. Took one health point. Almost dead, not dead enough. Can I just skip? Is there like a way to skip without walking? Um, and that would cost four, but I don't, I don't know what the difference is. That seems to be like if you're shooting, but it still has a hand, so I'm not quite sure what the difference is. Um, okay, so I have to walk. Or oh, maybe I can click over here actually. Okay. Like I said, it's been ages since I played any games with the, um, well, with the turn-based combat. Well, we can't really do much to it since we don't have a knife. Um, I mean, maybe we could if we had a knife. But yeah. Okay, and it doesn't seem to have anything in the inventory. Okay. But we gained some experience, and we didn't take that much damage actually. So that's not bad. Um, I'm not too happy about going over to the other guys over there, but uh, there was another one over here somewhere, I seem to recall, so let's try and work this way. Uh, but that will have to be time because we're definitely out of time for um, for today, so thank you for watching, and uh, yeah, let me know what you think of the game, and if you have any uh, suggestions or tips, as yeah, as you can see, it's me, I'll play something like this. Um, but it is very story based or story heavy you could say maybe you, you could kind of just skip things but i don't know i like the story parts um you just have to let me know what you think um but i think if you don't like those i don't know if it's actually a game for you like it's kind of the thing isn't it to like that is the interesting thing to learn all these little story parts um and in this how you get quests as you could see um, through the dialogues, for instance. Uh, but yeah, that's just me. Uh, so, thank you for watching, and uh, do take care, everyone, and uh, have an awesome weekend. Happy gaming!